Why does Dr. Umar call multiculturalism a weapon against African people? The reason I'm calling multiculturalism a weapon against African people is due to the fact multiculturalism did not begin being pushed through American society, through Western <laughs> history, through Europe, Canada, South Africa, Australia, France, all the European theaters of power, all the European countries. They started pushing multiculturalism in the 1970s and the 1980s as a response to the African-centered approach to the study of history, culture, and civilization. I'm going to say it again. Multiculturalism was put out by the white power structure to dismiss, to dismiss and distract away from African-centered and African-centered approach to history, culture and civilization when our grand master teachers gave birth to the black knowledge and black book explosion of the 1960s through the 1990s when our scholars gave birth to the black book and black information explosion from the 1960s to the 1990s that's when the white power structure that's when the white power structure stepped up and said wait 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 we can have no African-centered approach to spirituality. We can have no African-centered approach to culture. We can have no African-centered approach to civilization. So racism put multiculturalism out to undermine the African genesis of humanity. I said the white power structure put multiculturalism out to take away from the African genesis of civilization. I need you to understand, overstand, and understand me. Nobody practices multiculturalism except African people. Nobody practices it. Multiculturalism is a psychological weapon to brainwash black people into thinking the world cares about them as much as they care about themselves. Multiculturalism is a psychological technique used against politically uneducated black people to seduce you into thinking that the world cares as much about you as they care about everybody else. That's what multiculturalism is. If you disagree, show me the black presence in the Chinese neighborhood. Show me the black presence in the Chinese economy. Show me the black presence in the Arab community. Show me the black participation in the Anglo-Saxon community. Multiculturalism is a joke. And we're going to talk about the negative effects of multiculturalism, the social costs of multiculturalism against black people, the financial costs of multiculturalism against black people, the intellectual and cultural costs of multiculturalism against black people, the emotional costs of multiculturalism against black people, and the political costs of multiculturalism against black people. The snow bunny crisis is a form of multiculturalism. How is that helping us? Black men dating and marrying out the race. Black women dating and marrying out the race. How does the snow bunny crisis benefit black people? I'm not going to spend any more time on the snow bunny crisis. A second social cause of multiculturalism, it eliminates the uniqueness of the black experience. Multiculturalism eliminates the uniqueness of the black experience. See, the white man says, black people, stop talking about slavery. Black people, stop talking about Jim Crow. Black people, stop talking about civil rights. Other people also caught hell just like you. See, multiculturalism denies black people their unique historical experience in this country and around the world. The minute you bring up slavery, they start talking about all the other groups who used to be slaves. But what they never talk about is your slavery was the worst treatment of human people 
in history. What they don't talk about, your slavery was the longest. What they don't talk about, your slavery is the only one that dehumanized us. What they don't talk about, your slavery is the only one where the slave master owned your entire family lineage forever. Forever. No other slavery did the slave master own perpetually and eternally the entire lineage of an entire people. This is why we cannot become multiculturalists. I am not a multiculturalist. My people's experience is unlike anybody's. What I went through, nobody else went through. So you're not going to multiculturalize my people's experience. This is the trap. This is the trap. Don't you ever fall for this multiculturalism talk. Everybody was slaves before. Everybody was oppressed before. Everybody was mistreated before. And when you fall for that multicultural argument, they're able to dismiss the uniqueness of African people and force you to blend into this people of color. This people of color identity crisis. Don't ever become part of the people of color identity crisis because no people of color cause themselves people of color except Africans. Let me say it again. The only people who call themselves people of color are black people because you don't want to stand up and stand out. The only people who call themselves people of color are black people because you don't want to stand up and stand out. Jews call themselves Jews. Chinese call themselves Chinese. Latina call themselves Latina. Arabs call themselves Arabs. Mexicans call themselves Mexicans. East Indians call themselves Indians. Only black people. Only black people call themselves people of color because you don't want to stand up and you don't want to stand out. I am not a person of color. I am an African. I am not a person of color. I am a black man. I am not a person of color. I am a descendant of the Africans who were kidnapped Forced, forced to come to this country and built it. I am not a person of color. I am a black man. We have to stand up and stand out. We cannot allow them to exterminate us with our own silence. We cannot allow them to exterminate us with our own silence. We cannot allow them to exterminate us with our own silence. Next up, black religion is a big part of the multicultural trap against African people. The black church, the black masjid, I don't care if you Muslim, I don't care if you Christian, I don't care if you Jehovah Witness, whatever you in. 99% of all black religions are multicultural. And because they deify multiculturalism, and because they deify multiculturalism, I have nothing against the Latino African brothers and sisters. In fact, I consider them part of the African family if they identify full time as African. And for the ones who don't, I still respect them, just like I respect African-Americans who hate their African blood. You still a human being. I'm still going to respect you as a person, although I cannot respect your political ideology. The black church has brainwashed black people into thinking God don't want you to see color. The black church has brainwashed black people into thinking God don't want you to see color. The black church has brainwashed black people into thinking God don't want you to see color. If God didn't want you to see color, why did he make you so much darker 
than everybody else. If God don't want you to see color, why did he make your hair so much nappier than everybody else? If God don't want you to see color, why did he make your voice deeper than everybody else? If God didn't want you to stand up and stand out, why did he make the black woman five foot five and extra thick in the thighs? I said, if God didn't want us to stand out, why did he make the black woman Five foot five, extra thick in the thighs. If God didn't want you to stand out, God would not have made you different. If God didn't want you to stand out, God would not have made you different. And the reason you look different, the reason you are different is because you are the chosen people. Not because of no Torah, not because of no Bible, and not because of no Quran. You are the chosen people because God chose to put you here first. You are the chosen people, not because of no Torah, not because of no Bible, not because of no Quran. You are the chosen people because God chose to put you here first. The black church is a big problem for black liberation. The black church is a big problem for black liberation. The black church is a big problem for black liberation because they multiculturalize all of our problems out of existence. The next social cause of multiculturalism is it makes us feel bad for putting ourselves first. One of the biggest problems I see with black people in the race first agenda of the most honorable Marcus Garvey, the biggest problem I find with black people in the race first agenda of the most honorable Marcus Garvey, the biggest problem I find is black people feel conflicted about being for black people first. You're the only people in the world you don't feel right. You feel like you are committing a sin against God. You feel like you're committing a sin against humanity by caring about your people first. Every black person I have heard, they always have to qualify their love for themselves by saying, I don't hate nobody else. Why do you have to say, I don't hate nobody else after you say, I love my people first? Why does every black person have to say, I don't hate nobody after they say they love themselves. You are the only people who have to clarify that your self-love does not mean hatred for any other group. You are the only people who has to clarify that your self-love does not mean hatred for another group. You are the only people in the world who have to qualify that your self-love does not mean a hatred for other group. Nobody else says that. Chinese say I'm for Chinese. It's assumed he don't hate nobody else. Latinos say I'm for Latinos. It's assumed they don't hate nobody else. But when a black man says I love black people, when a black woman says I love black people in the very next breath, right after they say unapologetically, I love my people. They apologize the very next breath. Right after y'all say unapologetically, I love my people. The very next breath, y'all apologize and say, but I, I, that don't mean I don't have nothing against nobody else. I don't have nothing against why nobody else has to clarify. You never hear nobody say, I love my people, but I don't hate the blacks. I love being Chinese, but I don't hate the blacks. I love being a European Jew, but I don't hate the blacks. I love being an Arab, but I don't hate the blacks. Why doesn't anybody else have to clarify their self-love? You're the only people who have to clarify your self-love. Multiculturalism is a trap. Is this beneficial for y'all brothers and sisters? Ladies, give me some hearts. Brothers, give me some fists. Is this beneficial? Because I don't like wasting people's time because I don't like people to waste my time. Are we learning? Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the emotional cost of multiculturalism. And I know every black person watching can identify. I don't care if you mix race African. I don't care if you full blooded African. I don't care if you American African, continental African, Caribbean African, British African, Canadian African, Australian African. Everybody can identify with what I'm about to say. 
The number one emotional cost of being trapped in a prison of multiculturalism is you always have to explain your black perspective. Give me some fire if you understand where I'm coming from right now. Give me some fire if you understand where I'm coming from right now. When you are the black person in the room and you give your experience as a black person, you have to always explain and defend yourself. If you understand, overstand, or understand me, give me some fire on Instagram. Give me some fire on TikTok. Give me some fire on Facebook. Who can identify? How many of you was at the job as one of the only few blacks? And when the Chinese gave their experience, it was okay. When the Arabs gave their experience, it was okay. When the Latinos gave their experience, it was okay. When the Native Americans gave their experience, it was okay. But the minute you opened your black mouth and talked about what it is like to be black and how you are treated as a black man or a black woman, you had to explain yourself over and over again because everybody else in the room tried to dismiss your narrative. They tried to dismiss your experience. This is why multiculturalism is a trap. This is why multiculturalism is a trap because when you walk into a room as a black person, there will be some Chinese, there will be some Latino, there will be some Native American. There will be some Arab. There will be some Anglo-Saxon. There will be some East Indian. It looks like it's multicultural, don't it? But guess what? With all that diversity, with all that diversity in the room, guess what everybody in that room agrees on except you? Guess what everybody in that room agrees on except you. The white man agrees. The Chinese agrees. The Latino agree. The Arab agree. The East Indian agree. The Jew agree. They all agree that the black person in the room is irrelevant and unworthy of respect. Am I wrong, brothers and sisters? Am I wrong, brothers and sisters? Even in a so-called multicultural context, you are still victimized by white racism through proxy from all the other groups in the room. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You say, wait a minute. This room is culturally diverse, but I still feel alienated in this room. And the reason you still feel alienated, even in a culturally diverse room, is everybody in the room hates black people. That's why you still feel so alienated. The Chinese in the room don't like black people. The Arabs in the room don't like black people. The Native Americans in the room don't like black people. The Latinos in the room don't like black people. The East Indians in the room don't like black people. The Anglo-Saxons in the room don't like black people. And this is why you can take a black person from an all-white room. You could take a black person from an all-white room. And by the way, African Latinos... I'm not talking about you. You part of the family. Afro Latinos, I'm not talking about you. You are part of the family as long as you identify with us. Okay? I'm talking about anti-African Latinos, not African Latinos. Stay with me. So you put a black person in an all-white room and you say, I feel a lot of racism in this all white room. I feel a lot of tension in this all white room. I feel a lot of bigotry in this all white room. And then I take you from the all white room and I put you in a room that's culturally diverse. And when I put you in the room that's culturally diverse, your uneasiness doesn't go down. Your uneasiness doesn't go down. Your uneasiness doesn't go down. Your uneasiness stays the same or goes up. Why does your uneasiness stay the same or goes up when you go from an all white room to a multicultural room? When you go into the multicultural room, you should feel more comfortable. Why don't black people feel more comfortable when we go into the multicultural room? The reason black people still 
feel uncomfortable is because now you're not just the victim of white, white racism. You're the victim of Chinese racism. You're the victim of Arab racism. You're the victim of Native American racism, Latino racism. Oh yeah, multiculturalism is a joke, brothers and sisters. It is a joke. Why are we the only people who have to always defend our experience? Look at when the police kill us. The police kill us and there's a presumption of innocence even though everybody saw the police take that black man's life. Look at the brother who just got tased to death. You're going to tell me that two or three cops can't take that young brother. He was not that large. You're trying to tell me y'all can't handcuff his ankles and carry his ass up out. That's what you tell him. You can't handcuff the ankles and carry that man out. You could. You wanted to kill him. See, when people engage Africans, they want to harm us. So they create a situation that makes it look like we are aggressing them and offending them so they can take our life. You said he was resistant. Look at all the white men who murdered people and were taken alive with weapons. Look at the Buffalo shooter. See, some of you Negro peons want to defend the police and you're going to sit up here and tell me they had to tase him. They could have carried his ass out. They could have carried his ass up out of there. Look at the Buffalo shooter. He was fully armed and they didn't fire a single bullet. They talked him out. What did they do in Buffalo, New York? The police said we talked him into surrendering. Wait a minute now. He just murdered all these people and you talked him into surrendering. So why didn't they talk the brother into not resisting instead of tasing him to death? If they can talk the Buffalo shooter into giving up his rifle, why couldn't they talk this defenseless young man into not resisting? And you black people, I'm so sick of you, always defending the white power structure. I keep telling you, we cannot take all these Africans with us for the Freedom March. These Negroes are loyal to white supremacy. Half of you Negroes are in love with your slave master. You are in love with them. There are black people who are absolutely in love with racism. They are married to racism. You know what we're going to do? We're going to have a big wedding ceremony. I want to officially marry all you buffoons. I want to marry all the buffoons in the community to racism. We're going to have some white mannequin dolls. I'm going to get some white mannequin dolls and put them in a wedding gown and let you beta male bootlickers walk down the aisle with the wedding song and put a ring on your finger. Let's officially marry you to racism. Let's just do it the right way. We need wedding rings. Where, where's our jewelers at? Where the jewelers at? Where the African jewel? We need some conscious jewel. We need two million I love white people rings for black folks. Wedding rings. We need two million. I love white people wedding rings. We're going to have a massive. We love racism wedding ceremony for all the black people who are in love with their oppressor. We need to make that happen. We need to make that happen. When you endorse multiculturalism as a black person. When you endorse multiculturalism as a black person. You become an alien in a sea of people who don't like you. Imagine being a goldfish dropped in a fish tank full of piranha. Imagine being a goldfish dropped in a fish tank full of piranha. That's what you do when you endorse multiculturalism. You say the more color, the better. The more diversity, the better it is for everybody. The more diversity, the better it is for everybody. Really? So the Chinese man 
comes from China with a loan of credit to take over my neighborhood. The Arab shows up with a line of credit from Dubai or United Arab Emirates or Iraq or Afghanistan or Kuwait with a line of credit to take over my neighborhood and somehow putting all of them in the same space with me is going to make me feel better, look better, and do better. I don't know what crack you smoking. I don't know what crack y'all smoking, but that don't work for me. Multiculturalism is nothing but a disguise racism wears to psychologically seduce black people into dropping their guard. Nobody likes black people in the world. I've been all over the world. Nobody likes black people in the world. I've been all over the world. Nobody likes black people in the world. I've been all over the world. Stop playing this multicultural game. When they ask you, should we hire a Japanese? Should we hire an anti-African Dominican? Should we hire an Arab? Should we hire a Native American? You know what you should say? I think you need to hire another black person. I think you need to hire another black person. And why do you want me to hire another black person? Because I don't identify with nobody at this job. I don't identify with nobody at this school. I don't identify with nobody in this program because everybody here showed up in America as an immigrant. I'm the only person in this class whose ancestors showed up as imported merchandise. Everybody in this school, everybody on this job, everybody in this community, they showed up in America as an immigrant with resources. I'm the only person who showed up as imported merchandise and I'm the only one without any resources and I'm the only one without a solid connection to the land of my birth, a solid political economic connection to the land of my birth. So if you want to make it more diverse, hire more black people because I'm the only person on the island in here. We have to stop being afraid to be black. We have to stop being afraid to let other people know we are black. For so long, brothers and sisters, we have stood down and we have bore the brunt of uncomfortability. And I'm telling you that in 2023, it is time for us to get comfortable and make them uncomfortable. Don't let them silence your black voice. Don't you let them silence your black voice. Speak up and say, I have a problem with this Christmas party. I have a problem with this holiday party. I have a problem with this retreat because it seems like you catered to everybody culture except mine. But aren't you American? I mean, I know you're African American, but you're still one of us. I am not one of you. I am not one of you. I am not an American by privilege. I am an American by circumstance. America isn't something I'm proud to be a part of. America is something that was done to me. When you say you are an Italian American, when you say you are a Greek American, a Russian American, a British American, you're talking about your prideful experience in this country. I have no such frame of reference. When I think of America and what it has been to me, I think of fire and brimstone. So the next time you decide to include me in a group of Americans, you better come and ask my opinion first. I am an African victim in America. I am an African prisoner of war in America. Don't you ever mislabel me as one of you ever again. Multiculturalism is a process, is a process of being seen but not heard. 
Good point, Sister Leah. We're the only ones who freedom was a matter of legislation. Excellent point. The good sister said, our freedom is the only freedom that had to be legislated, voted on, and approved, and enforced. Because I would argue that right now, we still are not free. We're, we don't have any rights. Black people have no rights. None. You have none. You don't have a right to live. You don't have a right to breathe. You don't have a right to walk down the street. You don't have a right to learn in the classroom. You don't have a right to disagree with a white person. You don't have a right to speak back to your boss. You have no rights. So you say, Dr. Umar, if we have no rights, how do we get justice? If you don't have any rights, how do you get justice? You get justice through organized power. Organized power is how you get justice. You're not going to get it voting. You're not going to get it voting. I keep telling you Negroes that. You're never going to get justice through the vote. You're never going to get it through the march. You're going to get it through organized power. You have no rights. Every Negro fighting against the government by himself is fighting a losing battle. Every Negro fighting against the government by himself is fighting a losing battle. We have to organize. Black people standing together in solidarity. We can fight behind closed doors all we want, brothers and sisters. We can fight behind closed doors all we want, brothers and sisters. We can fight behind closed doors all we want, but when we come outside, I don't care if you are more Hebrew, guys and earth, nation of Islam, pan-Africanist, socialist, Garveyite, Muslim, Christian, Jehovah Witness. When we come outside, we got to be all for one and we got to be one for all. You understand? See, before we start arguing the issue, we have to establish respect respect. See, white folks want to go straight to the issue. Uh-uh. No, we're not even talking about the problem until we create an atmosphere of respect. Because until there's some respect right here, we ain't discussing shit. I don't care who you is, governor, mayor, president, congressperson, CEO, we need an atmosphere of respect. Because as African people, we deal in respect. So until we have an atmosphere of respect, nothing else going to get discussed. Y'all have to do that, brothers and sisters. Well, she says she didn't do it. Time out. Time out. The energy right now is very disrespectful, condescending, and racist. So before we talk about the issue, let us first establish an atmosphere of respect. Don't let nobody disrespect you. You check them. Stop right there. Change your tone. Change your attitude. You watch how you talk to me. Change your tone. Change your attitude. You walk how you talk to me. You watch how you talk to me. Multiculturalism makes us feel bad about putting ourselves first. And most of all, it removes us from the center of the human story. Black people are the center, the birthplace of the human story. You are the heart and soul. If somebody said, let's tell the story of humanity. Let's tell the story of humanity. Guess where it starts at? It starts in Africa. And it starts with black people. Let's tell the story of religion. It starts in Africa and it starts with black people. Let's tell the story of civilization. It starts in Africa. It starts in black. Let's tell the story of astrology. Let's tell the story of medicine. Let's tell the story of... 
It all starts with black people. And it all starts in Africa. Now let's talk about the political costs of multiculturalism. It's intended to downplay the unique story and the unique struggle of African people. Multiculturalism is intended to downplay the unique story and the unique struggle of African people. I'm going to say it again. Multiculturalism is intended to downplay the unique story and the unique struggle of African people. It also leads to weak black communities. Multiculturalism leads to weak black communities. And the reason multiculturalism leads to weak black communities is you don't have a problem letting anybody colonize your neighborhood. The black community is the weakest community because it does not protect black people. I'm going to say it again. The black community is the weakest community because it does not defend black people. Look at gentrification. Look at gentrification. Did the white people come in your neighborhood and ask you if it's okay to buy a house in your neighborhood? But when you moved to the white neighborhood, you had to get approval from the white homeowners associate. They had to meet with you and approve you to move on their block. Did they not? You had to meet with white people before you bought that million dollar house. White folks had to approve you before you could move on a block. But when they came into the black community and started gentrifying our neighborhood, they didn't ask a single black person what they thought about the white takeover. In fact, I saw I saw a, a interview clip of Reggie Wright from Rightway Security, who used to work with Death Row. And he says, Suge Knight tried to buy a house in a community where Sylvester Stallone lived. Suge Knight tried to buy a home in the community where Sylvester Stallone lived. And Sylvester Stallone didn't want no black people living in his community. So Sylvester Stallone went to the homeowners organization of that exclusive white community and told them he did not want Suge Knight living in his neighborhood. Isn't it interesting? White people can keep you out of their neighborhood, but you can't keep them out of your neighborhood. That's because you practice multiculturalism. They practice group economics, group politics, group racism. Until black people understand that. Until you understand that, we will get nowhere. Multiculturalism dissipates your political power. Desegregation of public schools was multiculturalism. What did that get us? Desegregation of public schools. Look what it gave us. Look what it gave us. And 50 years after the schools desegregated, special ed and ADHD and disciplined schools and juvenile detention has destroyed black boys through public school. Civil rights integration destroyed black wealth and black ownership. Show me where multiculturalism has benefited African people. We have no independent institutions because we don't see color. It gives you this false notion that we have a shared history. We don't have a shared history with nobody. Can somebody please tell me who we have shared history with? Because multiculturalism presumes that all Americans have a shared history. What is the shared history? Can somebody help me out? I've been looking for a book on the history that black people share with everybody else in America. Can somebody please tell me what that history is? What is the shared history of the black man in America with the white man, the brown man, the yellow man, and the red man? Can somebody please tell me what is the shared history between the black man with the white man, the brown man, the yellow man, and the red man? See, when you endorse multiculturalism, 
when you endorse multiculturalism, when you endorse multiculturalism, you make it possible for things like all lives matter. All lives matter. All lives matter. All lives matter. That's a multicultural scam. All lives matter. Why are we focusing on black people who die? All kind of people die. Why are we focusing on black people who get killed by police? Other people get killed by police. All lives matter, not just black lives. That's what Candace Owens and Kanye said. That's what Candace Owens and Kanye said. That's what Candace Owens and Kanye, they said all lives matter. Look at that. Look at how to use multiculturalism against black people. Black lives matter doesn't mean all lives don't matter. Black lives matter doesn't mean all lives don't matter. Black lives matter means all lives matter except black lives. So we have to let y'all know that black lives matter because all lives matter except black lives. So when we say black lives matter, we reminding you damn racists. When we say black lives matter, we're reminding you damn racists. When we say black lives matter, we are reminding you racists that black lives matter as well. In fact, black lives matter so much. Black lives matter so much. Black lives matter so much that you brought us all the way from Africa to build up your civilization. So black lives must certainly matter. All the prison experiments you conducted on black people, black lives must certainly matter. All the financial exploitation you've conducted against black people, black lives must certainly matter. People of color, minority and disadvantaged. How do you deny black people while making them think you're solving problems for black people? You come up with a new word that is not limited to black people, but includes all other groups of people. And by doing this, by making black people part of this solid bowl, by making black people part of this solid bowl, by making black people part of this solid bowl, you can take care of the Asians in the solid bowl. You can take care of the Arabs in the solid bowl. You can take care of the white women in the solid bowl. You can take care of the Native Americans in the solid bowl. You can take care of the East Indians in the solid bowl. You can take care of the homosexuals in the solid bowl. And you can take care of everybody in the solid bowl except the black olives in the black eggplant in the solid bowl. But because you manipulated the black olives in the black eggplant in the solid bowl into thinking they part of the solid, but they don't get no dressing. I said you manipulated the black olives in the black eggplant into thinking they part of the solid bowl, but they don't get no dressing. I said you got the black olive in the black eggplant thinking they are part of the solid, but they don't never get no solid dressing. Go to your city council, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Kansas City, Detroit, Phoenix, Little Rock, Birmingham, Houston, Miami, Atlanta, Raleigh, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Go to any city council and say, how much of the city contracts went to black people? Go ask your city council, how much of the city contracts went to black people? Go ask your city council, how much of the city contracts went to black people? You know what they're going to tell you? They're going to say 20% of city contracts went to minorities. 20% of city contracts 
went to minorities. And you're going to say, can I see a list of the minority contractors? Can I see a list of the minority contractors? And guess what you're going to see? White women, white gay male homosexuals. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you're going to see white gay males on the minority contract list because homosexuals are considered minorities. This is how they keep their resources amongst white people. This is how they keep the resources amongst white people. Truth be told, the LGBT movement ain't nothing but a white supremacist front to keep the resources coming to white people, even when they're supposed to go to minorities. You're going to see white Native Americans. You're going to see Asians, Arabs, and everybody else, some Latino, and you ain't going to see no black people on the list. Even though black people might be the biggest so-called minority group in your city. Black people might be the biggest so-called minority group in your city. Black people might be the biggest so-called minority group in your city and not a single black person got a contract. And who fault is it? Ours. Why? We let the white man redefine us out of existence. We let the white man redefine us out of existence. You don't ever let your enemy define you. You don't ever let your oppressor tell you that I'm putting you in with a group of people called minority. I'm putting you in with a group of people called disadvantaged. I'm calling you, putting you in with a group of people called people of color. You don't define me. I'm black. The only group you're putting me in is the black box. You're not lumping me in with other people who hate me as much as you do. You're not lumping me in with other people who have way more resources than I do, just like you. You're not going to put me in a sea of yellow, a sea of brown, in a sea of red and make me think that I'm doing better because those races are a little darker than the white races. Uh, -uh. We're not playing those games, Mr. White Man. We're not playing those games, Mr. White Man. Barack Obama and Joe Biden did the same thing to the HBCUs. We are going to have to fight the first fight, one of the first fights, one of the first political fights that we have to fight we have to redefine ourselves out of the minority box. We have to redefine ourselves out of the people of color box. We have to redefine ourselves outside of the disadvantaged box because as long as we stay in those boxes, as long as we stay in the minority box, the disadvantaged box, the people of color box, they will be able to ignore us brothers and sisters. They will be able to ignore us as hard as we are fighting for reparations. As hard as we are fighting for reparations, we need to fight for a reclassification of the American African away from people of color and minority. We do not want to be included with them. We have nothing in common with them. That is nothing but a scam to take resources from black people and give it to others. Joe Biden and Barack Obama did what? Rename the HBCU initiative. What did they call it? It's a... Uh, Minority serving institutions. It's no longer the HBCU initiative. It's the minority serving institutions. So now money that was going to the HBCU, money that was going to the HBCU can now go back to white colleges who serve Latinos, Native Americans, Arabs, Chinese, homosexuals, and snow bunnies. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They're trying to destroy the HBCUs. Part of the extermination of black people is the crushing of the HBCU movement. They're trying to crush the HBCUs. This is what the HBCU should have done and they can still do it. They should have marched on Washington.
that HBCUs and all their students and all their alumni should have marched on Washington and protested Barack Obama and Joe Biden for reclassifying you from HBCU to minority serving institution. That was a multicultural scam. That was a multicultural scam and the HBCUs accepted that multicultural scam without no pushback. We're going to see more HBCUs close down if we do not fight for the reclassification of HBCUs. I have no problem with colleges getting money to help Hispanic Americans. I have no problem with colleges getting money to help Native Americans. I have no problem. I have no problem with colleges helping any community advance their education and stability. I'm against nobody. I am 100% unapologetically against nobody. But at the same time, I am 100% unapologetically African and you will not let the brown man take money from the black man. You will not let the red man take money from the black man. You will not let the yellow man take money from the black man. I won't let you do it. I won't let you do it. I will not let you do it. Give the red man his own pot of money. Give the yellow man his own pot of money. Give the brown man his own pot of money. Give the poor white man his own pot of money. But you are not going to let them drink from the cup of funds that came from the brutality, massacre, dehumanization, marginalization, and extermination of African people. Nobody gets to take resources set aside for black people. Nobody. Let's talk about the financial costs of multiculturalism. We have no powerhouse black businesses. One of the biggest financial costs of multiculturalism is Black Wall Street. Multiculturalism destroys our black financial power. It does not allow us to fund our own black businesses because we are not financially selfish enough for black businesses to survive. I want you to hear me. If black people are going to make it, we have to become selfish as a group. You compete through selfishness. Selfishness is necessary for group survival. Anglo-Saxons and Arabs, everybody, Latinos, everybody's group power can be traced to political self-selfishness. They do not share power. Economic selfishness, they do not share wealth. Selfishness is a virtue for black people who want to survive the 21st century. Group selfishness, not individual selfishness. We can't be selfish with each other. I'm talking about as a group, we have to become politically selfish and we have to become financially selfish. If we do not do that, we will not survive. We must become politically and financially selfish. When the last time you seen Chinese man buy some soul food? When is the last time you seen a Chinese man or woman in a black soul food restaurant? When is the last time? Because you are always in his restaurant. You are always in the Chinese restaurant. We are always in the Chinese restaurant. So for all the millions of dollars we've given the Chinese stop and go. You mean to tell me you've never seen a Chinese in a black soul food restaurant? They supposed to be selfish. I'm not going to give you a dollar of my people's money. See, the reason these other groups can be so selfish politically and economically, their money belongs to the group. Their money, the Chinese say, this dollar is a Chinese dollar. I can't give a Chinese dollar to somebody who's not Chinese. The Arab said this is an Arab dollar. 
I can't give this Arab dollar to somebody who's not an Arab, but you don't think like that because you have been multiculturalized against your own community. Black people have been multiculturalized against your own community. Black people have been multiculturalized against your own community. And since you've been multiculturalized against your own community, you don't feel bad empowering other groups with your dollar. You don't feel no guilt, no shame, no remorse by empowering other groups with your money. Black women, black women, beautiful African queens. First, let me salute the butter almond queendom, the butter pecan queendom, the caramel queendom, the fudge queendom, the nutmeg queendom, the cinnamon queendom, the African vanilla queendom, the African lemonade queendom. I salute all of the African queendoms. But black women, you will never find another group of people who will pump $30 billion. Sisters, I love y'all, but y'all need a revolution. And y'all need a revolution in self-esteem. And y'all need a revolution in cultural authenticity. The black woman who is the original woman is the most culturally unauthentic woman in America. I do not mean to disrespect the mothers of our children, the queens of our community, but I have to be honest. I am so disappointed in the black woman culturally. How can the mother of civilization be the most culturally inauthentic person in this country? Your hair is fake. Your ass is fake. Your breast is fake. Your lips is fake. Your nose is fake. Everything. Where is your authenticity? Now, I'm not going to knock you if you went and got a little job done on one part of your body. I'm cool. I'm going to live with one part. I'm going to live with that. But you know what y'all do? Y'all go through a whole metamorphosis. The black woman goes through an entire European metamorphosis where you got to change your face, your nose, your lips, your hips, every skin color. Guess how much money the African family globally, not just America, Globally, not just America, the African family globally spends eight billion dollars on skin lightener. Did y'all hear what I just said? Eight billion dollars on skin lightener globally. They said it's going up to 12 billion dollars on skin lightening cream. Hating your skin color is a $12 billion business. Hating your hair is a $30 billion business. Our self-hatred is another racist heaven. Black women, y'all have to do something about this $30 billion hair and beauty care bill that we keep on investing into Koreans and Chinese every year. We got to stop this shit. Forgive my language, black women, y'all have to do something. One of the first conferences we're going to have at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, one of the first conferences we're going to have is a natural black beauty conference. We must have a natural black. Who come into the natural black beauty conference? What black men and black women want to present? a presentation at the nat Natural Black Beauty Conference. We got to bring it back. $30 billion on the way we look? $30 billion on the way we look? Am I the only person who sees something wrong with that? $30 billion on the way we look? That is insane. We out here making other people rich and then we crying about tuition at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey. You 
putting $30 billion into the Koreans and you crying about tuition at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on now. Imitation. Imitation. It's cultural genocide. You don't ever imitate nobody else. I love women with natural hair. I love women with natural hair. Sisters, we need y'all to go natural. We are gonna have a natural hair conference and contests. You be able to win some money and win a trophy for the best shortcut, best locks, Best Afro, best long lock, short locks, blowout. We gonna make being black attractive again. We have to make being black attractive again. The most honorable Marcus Garvey said, we have to sell blackness back to black people. We have to sell blackness back to black people, brothers and sisters. By being multicultural, we're allowing ourselves to be financially exploited by the other groups. It's also an argument against reparations. Multiculturalism is an argument against reparations. Multiculturalism is an argument against reparations. I'm sorry, we cannot have a debate, family. No disrespect, my TikToker. No disrespect to my TikToker. No disrespect to my TikToker, but in the words of the late great Pan-Africanist master teacher, Dr. John Henry Clark, he said, quote, I only debate my equals, all others I teach. I only debate my equals, all others I teach. No disrespect. I have six degrees. How many you got? No disrespect. I built one school, I own two. How many institutions you building? No disrespect. I've raised the consciousness of more black people than probably almost any black man almost ever in modern history. I know I'm up there. If I'm not number one, I'm up there. How many black people you brought to consciousness? I've saved more black boys from the special ed to prison pipeline than any black man in American history. In history. How many you save? So no disrespect. Just because I'm humble, don't you ever forget that I don't know who the I am in this world. Don't ever forget. King Kong consciousness knows exactly who I am. Don't get it fucked up. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Now, last but not least, Let's talk about the intellectual and cultural costs of multiculturalism. It denies our right to claim what's ours. If you are multicultural, it denies your right to claim what's yours, like reparations. They say, why you want to take from the country? We all need help. Why you want to take from the country? We all poor. Why you want to take from the country? We all struggling. No, we not. Not the way black people are. Oh, no, we not. Half the black men in the major cities been unemployed since the 80s. That's an epidemic. And they keep talking about crime and ain't nobody talking about livable wage job. They keep talking about crime, but ain't nobody talking about livable wage job. They keep talking about crime, but ain't nobody talking about livable wage job. Don't talk to me about stopping no crime, mayor, governor, president, until you talk about livable wage job. Let me give you an example. Misappropriation of funds. This is why we must fight for reclassification out of POC in minority. In Philadelphia, they're bringing back the trolleys. In Philadelphia, they're bringing back the trolleys. Can somebody explain to me why the city of Philadelphia and other cities are spending money 
on transportation projects that they don't need, spending money on art programs they don't need, spending money on Ukrainian refugees, Afghan refugees, and half the black men are unemployed. Somebody help me out. How you got money for Ukrainian refugees and you got all these unemployed black men. And then Joe Biden says he's going to give the Ukrainians a social security check. If you are a Ukrainian refugee in America, you can get government funds, but you don't pay no taxes. Lord have mercy. If you are a Ukrainian refugee in the United States, you can get an SSI check. You're not a citizen, you don't pay taxes, you don't own a business, but you can get an SSI check, but black people can't get reparations. Brothers and sisters, help me out. Brothers and sisters, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Can somebody explain to me who Joe Biden think he is to give the Ukrainians an SSI check when you got homeless black people all over America. If you give these homeless black people a $950 SSI check, if you give these homeless black people a $950 SSI check, most of them could get off the streets. We have more black homeless people than any time in the history of this country since 1960. Why? Because gentrification is putting our people on the street. You have more black homeless than any time in the past 60 years. And instead of giving them a homeless voucher, what about a homeless voucher? What about, so you're going to ignore all these black people who built the country and you're going to give the Ukrainians a monthly SSI check of $950. You don't work, you don't pay taxes, you didn't build the country, but you're going to get a welfare check from President Joe Biden. But he just sent the Haitians back home. He put the Haitians on a boat back to Haiti. So the Haitians got to go back home to Haiti, but the Afghanis can stay, get medical care, housing, education, and an SSI check and y'all complaining about black people being on welfare. Y'all complaining about black people being on welfare. Y'all complaining about black people being on welfare, but you giving the Ukrainians free houses, free medical, free education, and a social security check up to $950 a month, but you crying about black people being on welfare. You got all these white men becoming millionaires off of legal cannabis and marijuana after y'all didn't sent 50 years of black men to jail for smoking and selling weed. Y'all didn't sent a half a century of black men to jail for smoking and selling weed. And now white men are making millions and billions of dollars legally off the same marijuana y'all sent black men to jail for. Y'all destroyed the black family over marijuana for 50 years. And now you letting white men make millions and billions of dollars off of the same marijuana that you sent all those black men to jail for. And you Negroes got the audacity to celebrate July 4th. You Negroes got the audacity to celebrate July 4th. You Negroes got the audacity to celebrate July the 4th. Another problem with multiculturalism. Another problem with multiculturalism. Another problem with multiculturalism. It allows the cultural exploitation of black art by other people without restitution. Multiculturalism allows the exploitation of black art by non-Africans without payment or restitution. No disrespect. DJ Khaled is an Arab. No disrespect. DJ Khaled 
is an Arab. No disrespect, DJ Khaled is an Arab. Eminem is an Anglo-Saxon. Eminem is an Anglo-Saxon. Eminem is an Anglo-Saxon. These men have made millions of dollars off of black art and they never paid a black tax. Can somebody explain that? Can somebody explain that to me? Can somebody explain to me? No disrespect to either one. But DJ Khaled is an Arab. The Arabs owe black people reparations for slavery. So can somebody go ask DJ Khaled a question for me? Can somebody go ask DJ Khaled a question for me? Can somebody go ask DJ Khaled a question for me? DJ Khaled, since you made so much money off of black music, DJ Khaled, since you made so much money off of black music as an Arab, are you willing to publicly state that the Arab states, the Arab League owes African people reparations for slavery. Are you ready to say that, DJ Khaled? DJ Khaled, are you ready to, to say that the Arab nations that still participate in modern day slavery need to be charged and prosecuted in world court for selling black people into slavery. I'm trying to understand why all these fake bougie gangster rappers are not asking DJ Khaled about modern slavery in Arabia or ancient slavery in Arabia. The Arabs are trading black people into slavery right now. Since DJ Khaled has made all this money on black rap, I think DJ Khaled should be the spokesperson against slavery, modern slavery in Africa, and for reparations to Africa for beginning the African slave trade because it was the Arabs who began the African slave trade. So somebody need to go and ask DJ Khaled, what is he willing to say or do about slavery in Africa yesterday and today? There was a conversation about whether or not Latinos participated in the birth of hip hop. Did Latinos, are they the co-creators of hip hop? The answer is no, they are not. Hip hop is an African cultural art form. Rap music came from the songs that our ancestors sang on the plantation as they worked. Rap music came from the rhythms and the poems that our ancestors sang on the plantation. Rap music grew out of the blues, which grew out of the poetry of enslaved Africans on the plantation. So if you were not an enslaved African, and if you don't consider yourself to be a black African, how can you be co-creator of rap when rap descended from the plantation poetry and plantation rhythm of the American African slave experience? No disrespect to nobody. No disrespect to nobody. No disrespect to nobody. Now, my African Cubans, my African Puerto Ricans, my African Dominicans, they can say hip hop came from me because they're coming from an African perspective. The African Cubans, the African Ricans, the African Dominicans can say I'm the father of hip hop because they're speaking as a member of the African family, just like Dr. Umar, who is not a rapper, and I was not there 
when hip hop had its birth. But because I am an African, I can claim hip hop as mine because the culture belongs to the people. The culture don't belong to the individual. But if you're trying to say that Latino culture co-created hip hop, that's blasphemy. If you're trying to say Latino culture co-created hip hop, that's blasphemy because hip hop came from the plantation poetry and the plantation rhythm. That's where hip hop came from. So if you don't identify with the Africans who was on those plantations in America who gave birth to hip hop, then don't say you gave birth to hip hop. We had better stop letting people come in and steal. Y'all let the white man steal jazz. Y'all let the white man steal soul food because of multiculturalism. Because of multiculturalism. And now you're letting white people steal African spirituality. Y'all don't learn. Y'all don't learn. Y'all letting white people steal hip hop. Y'all don't learn. You are so multicultural. You can't even tell when the multiculturalism is being used against you. One of the biggest side effects of multiculturalism is it defeats the self-esteem, self-worth, and self-pride of African children. It defeats the self-esteem, the self-worth, and the self-pride of African children. Multiculturalism defeats the self-esteem, the self-worth, and the self-pride of African children. When they sit in a room and we brainwash them into multiculturalism, everybody matters Everybody contributed the same. You're no different than nobody else. Try to fit in and get along. And then Chinese start making racial jokes about black people and black history. Arabs start making racial jokes about black history and black people. racist anti-African Latinos start making jokes about black people and black history. Native Americans start making jokes about black people and black history. And your child is hurting inside because you never taught him who he was. You sent him to church and let the church make him think color don't matter. Because if color don't matter, culture don't matter. If color don't matter, culture don't matter. And so your child been running around with a head full of Jesus, a head full of Moses, a head full of Muhammad and no knowledge of self. I said your child been running around with a head full of Islam, a head full of Christianity, a head full of Hebrewism, but no knowledge of self. And then when the other kids start poking jokes at him, he don't even know how to counter the jokes. Because he don't know a damn thing about who he is. Brothers and sisters, we had better wake up in 2023. I am excited. I am motivated. I am looking forward to working with every one of you who wants to work with me as long as your head and your heart is in the right place. See, these two things right here. The head and the heart must be in alignment with African liberation. Your head and your heart must be in alignment with African liberation. You must think progressively about African liberation and you must feel, you must feel the urgency of the need for African. You have to love African people to want to free African people. You have to love African people in order to free African people. The head must be African and the heart must be African. But if you running around with a snow bunny, if you running around with a snow bunny, if you running around with a snow puppy, if you running around with a snow puppy, how can your head and your heart be in alignment. You tell me your head is with the people, but your heart is with the white woman. You tell me your head is with the people, but your heart is with the 